an Epstein uh, anomaly case during uh, prenatal uh, screening and uh, you can notice uh, there is a large tricuspid uh, regurgitation, severe one filling the entire uh, right atrium and the reason for tricuspid regurgitation is here that is the septal leaflet which is tethered to the interventricular septum which is a hallmark of uh, an Epstein's uh, anomaly. Today I am going to share with you uh, the risk stratification of an Epstein anomaly beyond goes score and that's very very important to risk stratify because Epstein anomaly patients tend to have a very high intrauterine uh, mortality and uh, they also have a high uh, mortality during neonatal period and uh, I am going to tell you uh, more important uh, signs for prognostication just the goose score is not enough in this video please watch the video till the end because at the end I'm going to show you a couple of very very unusual very uncommon rare findings which we had in this patient of an Epstein's uh, anomaly so I'll take you forward from here uh, I have lucky to completed uh, a full circle around uh, the Sun today uh, and uh, that's an uh, fetal uh, Epstein anomaly you see in the fetal uh, in an Epstein anomaly the abnormality is that anterior leaflet actually moves down uh, and the entire uh, or orifice moves down toward the right ventricle utilizing a right uh, large part of the uh, right ventricle normal structure of the tricuspid valve should be somewhere here but if you notice uh, it moves down utilizing a very large portion of the right ventricle and this structure functionally becomes a part of the right uh, atrium not only that there is a thinning of the wall of the right atrium here also which complicates the entire issue now let me explain you the main uh, fundamental features uh, tethering of the valve that it's not delaminated properly from the septum and it gets attached here and that's the one reason one anomaly in the Epstein's then the second one is uh, to compensate and to reach to the cooptation point there is a large anterior leaflet so large anterior leaflet and septal uh, um, attachment here are hallmarks of uh, the Epstein anomaly <coughs> now what we had initially was a goose score and we applied it to almost every patient and uh, uh, this is anatomical there's no functional component in this that probably is the drawback of uh, this uh, cellar major or a uh, goose scoring system what do we do here is that we take into account the size of the right atrium we take into the account of an atrialized uh, 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 right ventricle so that this becomes the entire uh, right atrium and this right atrium uh, is uh, you know main uh, denominator then then we what we do is that we divide this with the the rest of the word the rv the lv and the left atrium and we drive a score if it is less than 0.5 it is mild grade one if it is uh, uh, severe that means the this portion is larger very large larger this portion severer is the is the grade let us apply this to an r patient we in this an r patient this is the atrialized portion and that's what we uh, uh, parameterized it and then found this was the area and then the area of uh, uh, the rest of uh, uh, L LA, LV and uh, the right ventricle and score in our patient was 0 0.7 which puts it in grade 2. Grade 2 means that the prognosis is not too bad I mean it's okay it's fine so let's let's see what other scores are telling us in this area the new score actually came because the major score wasn't enough to explain and it was not good indicator of mortality and morbidity both intrauterine and after the child is born we added a couple of more apart from Silla major uh, index we added uh, cardiothoracic ratio again you understand that's very very important because of the pulmonary hypoplasia related with the uh, cardiomegaly then pulmonary valve flow ductal flow these were right sided uh, uh, hemodynamic things and added another anatomical structure left and right ventricle uh, ratio this actually gave a bit better uh, prognostication than the other one but let me tell you let's see what are the, uh, the cardiothoracic ratio and we understand the cardiothoracic ratio is not in favor 
but i would suggest all of you to use this new score which is called as a trip score this probably is the best to include all the hemodynamic features it doesn't include any anatomical uh, structures here and, and and if we compare this with the sas score trip score is a very good uh, uh, discriminator between the fetai those who are going to survive and those who are not using a cutoff of about 5 score you can see very good uh, demarcation between the outcome of of these uh, fetai and the neonatal so trip score probably is best out of all and uh, uh, if i may tell you what trip score is and i'm going to use trip score in our patient it uses tricuspid uh, regurgitation maximum velocity why because the tr velocity jet the force of tr the pressure is what pressure are we generate so are we pressure is very very important in prognostication it tells you what is the residual are we a uh, function after rest of the portion is atrialized then l uh, r v uh, produces an l v dysfunction by displacement of interventricular septum and that is why the l v gets involved and if lv tie index is bad this is a very very important prognosticator in patients with an abstains anomaly and so are the pulmonary forward flow and ductal flow okay so if we apply these things and if the score is more than 5 then it's bad prognosis now look at this figure this is the tricuspid regurgitation and we find velocity little higher than uh, uh, 2.5 uh, meter per second that means the rv is unable to generate a velocity more than 2.8 second now in this look at the pulmonary valve very carefully the pulmonary valve isn't opening well the reason of pulmonary valve not opening that rv is unable to generate the pressure to open the pulmonary valve and why the, the pulmonary artery pressure is higher than the rv or equal than the rv because pa pressure now represents what it represent aortic pressure because you have a ductus connected to it right so pa pressure actually indicates the lv pressure so if the rv pressure is equal or less than lv pressure the pulmonary valve would not open that's a very important prognostic sign and look at uh, uh, the 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 pulmonary valve and this is the ductus and you see the ductal flow there is a ductal reversal flow reversal here and if you notice the ductal flow reversal on an m mode you see it's predominantly happening in in systole and there is a some small flow forward flow in diastole in across uh, the ductus and if you notice here the pulmonary valve actually now you see the pulmonary flow in the pulmonary artery as the pulmonary valve isn't opening too well there is a bidirectional flow in the pulmonary artery proximal pulmonary artery and uh, and this the reason is that there is a very small flow across the pulmonary valve through the right ventricle and rest of is a reverse flow from the ductus art so there is a bidirection or a reduced pulmonary forward flow so now let's apply the trip score to our patient the tr velocity was little more than 2.5 so give a score of 1 lv tai index i am going to show you in our patient was 0.84 0.83 give a score of 2 pa flow direction you saw it was reduced 1 ductal flow was bidirectional 1 so the score was 5 plus so we understand now if the score is more than 5 it is going to have a bad outcome let me explain you tai index now tai index in this patient you calculate the tai index now this includes in between the, the diastolic periods and this is iv uh, ct that is isovolemic contraction time isovolemic relaxation time and this is uh, uh, the ejection time and the tai index as i told you was 0.84 which is something unusual you must watch here what is this wave you know you, this is coming after the uh, the diastole is finishing that means this is coming in isovolemic contraction period look at this wave and we have seen this wave 
in pediatric and adult cardiology and these waves are called presystolic waves and we know these presystolic waves have a bad outcome and why so i'm going to explain you what is the reason in systole and diastole the when the blood flow goes across the uh, the the valves it produces certain vortices in the in the left ventricle and these are the vortices what you see this is an mr and you see this is a vortices now you see this inflow going right into the lv and as the inflow goes it forms two vortices one on the lateral wall one which goes uh, uh, towards the lvot so these vortices are more prominent when lv is small so in our case an epstein anomaly lv was small because of the rv because it pushed it to uh, lv from the interventricular septum side and then what you saw these vortices which increased now these vortices are important these vortices we saw in adult cardiology are important indicators of a preclinical uh, lv diastolic and systolic uh, dysfunction and these are the presystolic wave what we see so in our case we had the, the, this uh, presystolic wave which was indicative of a bad outcome or a bad lv i promise you to show you some other additional abnormality then there is one additional abnormality or a finding in this uh, uh, um, fetus with an epstein anomaly you see this kind of uh, a thin filamentous structure in the right uh, atrium and this filamentous structure is actually called a chiari malformation which is a normal phenomena you might see in in couple of patients those who have a right atrium which is enlarged or even in a normal uh, fetus okay so this is a normal uh, uh, structure chiari formation uh, malformation not to get worried about it another additional finding in this patient is uh, uh, a subaortic membrane Uh, if you remember in my one of the youtube uh, videos i had shown a case of a subaortic membrane and this is the subaortic membrane which can produce obstruction across the lv ot and you see this is present just proximal to the aortic valve another additional abnormality you see in this patient what you see here is the fossa valis uh, aneurysm which is going right up to the um, opening of the Uh, al mitral valve and this is called a grade 3 fossa valis uh, aneurysm but there is something very very interesting and unusual and that is you see kind of two inflows in the the left uh, ventricle yeah you see these two inflows and i showed you this was patient had a subaortic membrane and that led to uh, uh, the aortic regurgitation okay damaging of the valve by the jet and ar so now this patient has two inflows what do we mean by two inflows and what is the implication again i take you to a, ped- a pediatric and adult cardiology case and uh, this is the patient who had two uh, inflows okay and that's two inflows were because of a what we have a condition called a double orifice uh, mitral valve in double orifice mitral valve instead of single orifice you have two orifices of the mitral valve so that was again unusual uh, uh, patient uh, we we can suspect a double orifice mitral valve but i mean i think we are limited by the resolution issues in the fetal echo and uh, we are following up this case and we'll up to update you as and when we get info uh, on this so i i hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, video uh, showed a couple of important aspects just to revise uh, everything the more important are hemodynamic parameters uh, which you should assess in uh, epstein anomaly called a trip score use trip score for prognostication if it is more than 5 it's a bad prognostic sign and if it is less than 5 the child is, uh, it would be all right and i showed you couple of very very interesting uh, uh, features and additional findings whenever you see something you must look for additional findings uh, to end this i'm going to suggest you to subscribe the channel so as and when i upload something new you would be notified uh, remember do look for more abnormalities once you found one important is that is commonly asked what is the most commonly missed abnormality the answer is the second one you are so engorged with the first abnormality you miss subsequent abnormalities i think that's lesson enough for today keep learning bye